Hey everybody, what's going on? And welcome to Rock and Roll True Stories. And uh, I want to talk about some news that's that happened this week. So Guns N' Roses former guitarist Gilby Clark gave an interview to Ricky Rackman's uh, Cat House Hollywood podcast. And uh, of course, anytime Gilby does an interview, Guns N' Roses comes up. And he finally revealed how he got fired from the band. We knew he got fired back in 1994, but the circumstances were never clearly explained. So he basically said, and he even said in the VH1 documentary behind the music, that uh, they knew the band was going to be over when they got off the road in 1993, the end of the User Illusion tour. And he said, I felt on that tour as the tour was ending, the band was over. That was my honest intellectual conclusion. Duff McKagan physically looked terrible. The alcohol abuse was so bad, he was bloated. I didn't think he had many days left. Axel and Slash were not seeing eye to eye. Axel saw the band one way and Slash saw it another way. I didn't see them meeting. It's not like I was trying to be in the middle of whatever. It was fractured. Now at that point he also revealed that he got an offer to do a solo record, which is which was his album Pawn Shop Guitars. He went to the band, said, hey, I want to do a solo record. Is that okay? They said, we're not doing anything, so go ahead and do it. So during that time, he also played with Slash on his first Snake Pit record in 1995. It's 5 o'clock somewhere. And then he went out on tour. So Gilby was pretty much on the road for four or five years straight. Now, Gilby also realized during that time when he was working on a solo record or out promoting it, that he was basically no longer in the band. And he revealed the story between him and Slash, where Slash called him one day and said, let's meet at Casa Vega. And Slash goes, Axel doesn't want you in the band anymore. I don't know what it is. I honestly don't. Just go with it. I'm not saying this is permanent. I'm just saying this is where it is. He wants to work on some new music. He doesn't see as what we're doing is viable. And that's also the time that Slash decided to make his Snake Pit record. Axel didn't like Slash's stuff either, but he wasn't kicking Slash out of the band. Now Clark continued by saying, they didn't fire me, but my paycheck stopped. And then a week later, Slash had this revelation. He goes, what the F are we doing? Are we going to replace Gilby? And he called me and he goes, you know what? Everything's fine. You're in the band. Don't worry about it. But my paychecks never came back. And that was it. So like I said, I never was officially fired from the band, but just kind of ended. Also, remember, it's not like I was out of the band and then the band was doing anything. They weren't doing anything for a very long time. But he was also, he also emphasized that he wasn't bitter about this whole experience he went through. And he also revealed a couple of years ago that he was offered an invitation to join the band on stage as part of the Not In This Lifetime tour, but because his daughter's in a band and was playing a festival that weekend, he wasn't able to join Guns N' Roses for that particular show. Now, Clark also remained open to any future possibilities, saying, I have nothing against it. It just didn't work out for me, he said. It was also during the same interview, he talked a bit about his relationship with original guitarist Izzy Stradlin, who he replaced in 1991. He said the following, I haven't talked to him recently. I know Matt Sorum talks to him every now and then, but I mean, I did talk to him even when I was in Guns N' Roses and we were still in contact. I'd run into him at places and we'd hang out and talk, but I knew Izzy before Guns, so we definitely had a good relationship. So that does it for today's video, guys. I want to let you know I'm not a fan of Ricky Rackman. I used to be because, you know, like a lot of people, I was a fan of Headbangers Ball. But on my Guns N' Roses channel, I interviewed a lot of people who are close to the band, including members, producers, and all those kinds of types of people. And we were supposed to interview Ricky Rackman. And he had this thing going where, you know, he was getting inundated with interview requests. And he said, okay, if you guys donate to this charity, I will come on your show, as long as you're within the first 10 people to do so. We were within the first 10 people to do so. And I had to chase Ricky Rackman for months on end. And when I, he, when I finally did make contact with him, he'd be like, okay, when do you want to do the interview? I'd list a date, and then he would never respond. And then we just went through the same cycle over and over again. So to me, he's completely useless, and he's not good by his word. But that's my, I just wanted to vent that out, because I don't think I ever told my other channel subscribers that story. But uh, that does it for today's news, guys. Thanks for watching. Be sure to the like button and subscribe. And we'll be back tomorrow at 10 a.m. Eastern with another rock and roll true story. I promise it's gonna be a good one. And hopefully you guys are having a good Christmas holiday and happy new year.